Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And since it's Women's History Month, I'm here today to talk to you about Harlots, season one. So this came out in 2017. I already talked about the first episode, go watch that, which is probably gonna be hard to find. I got about a thousand videos, but all you gotta do is go to my page and then go to the search part and then search it. So anyway, this show was created by Allison Newman and Maura Buffanini. I don't know how to say her name. <laughs> and it is actually based off a book by a historian called The Covent Garden Ladies by Haley Ruben Hold. And this show is amazing. It is awesome. It is very fascinating. I love period pieces. And so when I saw the name, I was instantly like intrigued and just like curious about what it was going to be like. Man, these women do not play around. Think of them as a mob of prostitutes. <laughs> They're like little gangsters and everything. It's like they have such mob mentality. It's insane. Like they are ruthless and everything. Especially to get the higher um the higher up on the other um brothel and stuff. I really like the way this show is written. Like it's written in a very smart and like engaging way. All of the characters are interesting and they keep you like intrigued throughout like the entire season there's only eight episodes per season and it only lasted for three it was only commissioned for three season one and two are the best and season three is eh. you know what i'm saying because like the main actress had to lead to do the walking dead to play alpha so she was gone for most of season three season three fired a bunch of people from season one and two and brought in a bunch of new people and it just didn't feel the same and i hate when they do that crap like i hate when they get rid of characters that are so interesting but then they try to bring in new characters that are similar to that of like the ones that made it so lovable and their thing and memorable i hate when they do that crap but yeah it's just it tells the life of what life was like back in the 1790s for a woman being like a streetwalker and everything and it's funny how much power they had like over men because of like all that clickety clacking and stuff but you know a woman really couldn't get no job unless she was a streetwalker and like you know or worked in like a brothel and then, so the men, you know, they constantly would go there. But, you know, the Justice Department, they always tried to, like, you know, arrest those, like, streetwalker women and stuff like that. Even though that was the only job they was allowed to have. It is insane how those women had, like, no rights back then. And men controlled literally everything. There were slaves back then. There were um, free slaves. And then there were black people who were born free. And, you know, this show addresses that. Now, there is one downfall to this, and that's naked man booty. And there is a lot. And especially they get up right close to the camera. And I hate that. If you ever heard my disgust about that, I'm so sick and tired of hearing that. But this really does give you a glimpse into how life was like back in 1790 Britain and stuff. How like men used to control women, how they wouldn't even hear what they had to say, how they didn't believe them, how they would like assault them and everything, how they would kidnap them and everything, how crooked the Justice Department is. It is nuts how life was like back then in the day. And I like when shows, you know, contact historians and based like shows off their work to show what things were like back then. It was just nuts. I'm telling you the truth, man. They're like gangsters. They were like a mob of like streetwalkers and stuff. <laughs> like the things they do in this show will shock and amaze you just to get the higher up on another brothel and stuff. Ah. Oh. <laughs> 
Boy, I can't believe the way they used to dress back then. Like, I don't know, man. It's just weird how for so many centuries, people were dressing like suits and long dresses as hot as it would be. Like, that's just nuts. So let's get into some characters before I get into what the entire like season is about. Now, the show is on Hulu, so go check it out. So, Margaret Wells. She is played by Samantha Morton. And I've talked about her before. She left towards the end of season two to play Alpha in The Walking Dead. To come back halfway into season three. Her daughter is Esme, who played, um, what's that show on Amazon Prime? Um, crap. It's like one of my favorite shows. Oh, crap. I can't remember the name of it. But as soon as I can, I'll probably put it down in the description. And, that, and her and her daughter look like absolutely like the same. And then Hannah, that's the show. Hannah. Go watch Hannah on Amazon Prime. I've talked about that. Go watch my videos. That's an amazing show. Anyway, Margaret Wells. She is the head of her own brothel on the street. Now, her facility isn't as high class as miss quigley's it's dirty it's run down it's in a bad part of the town all her girls they look good but they're kind of like you know um what you call trashy and everything and she has a rivalry with lida quigley she used to work for lida quigley she was sold to lida um when she was 10 and she's been a streetwalker like ever since or a sex worker ever since at 10 years old like my god and so she is best friends with a woman named nancy nancy is kind of like this tomboyish um woman who well so far we only see her as a lesbian she has her own brothel but it's more like dominatrix type stuff or at least she does dominatrix type stuff and so her and nancy used to work there and then they escaped together and so they lived on the streets together until they was able to establish their own like facility and stuff so they're best friends and it's like do or die and they will do anything for each other even if it means betray like you can't believe how many people betray people in this show when it gets towards the end of the season man there are twists and betrayals left and right <laughs> you can't keep up <laughs> and so margaret um she has two dollars charlotte is the oldest and lucy is the youngest now she won't let charlotte live in her, her brothel house she keeps selling her to like men and so that causes some resentment towards the two lucy is like you know her youngest and she wants to like cherish her and make sure she never has to work in like prostitution but when margaret is about to lose her home thanks to miss quigley and can't pay the mortgage then like i said in episode one she makes lucy you know she basically pimps her out <laughs> pimps her own daughter out that is a shame both of them and she's very protective of lucy even more so like she's more protective of lucy than she is charlotte her and charlotte like barely talk but they still love each other now margaret her lover is a man named william he is, he was born a, um, a free black man and he's also kind of like the bodyguard and he's the father figure to charlotte and lucy now margaret also has a son named jacob alongside william jacob doesn't really do much he's just like there you know um and margaret and i mean lucy and charlotte barely like interact with him so anyway she really 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 hates mrs quigley and will do anything to like put her out of business and it turns out why like when we find out later in the season why those two don't like each other it's more than her just like leaving and stuff and so margaret will do anything it takes to protect lucy even if it means kill a man lida quigley she is the sworn enemy of that of margaret wells 
Reason being is because Margaret used to work with her when she was uh, Margaret was sold to her at 10 years old. But the reason why they hate each other is because Margaret had Miss Quigley arrested back in the day. Ever since then, she just wants revenge now. And she has a son named Charles, who's just like a mama's boy. And Miss Quigley has a high-end brothel. All the girls are elegant. The inside is like a mansion. Like she only tastes the finest of the fine. But Miss Quigley is very shady. Miss Quigley um, has a friend in the Justice Department. And Justice um, Cuff something. Justice um, Con Leafy or Leafy or something like that. Uh, Liffy, he is justice of that like town and he's very, very corrupt. He wants to be a part of a high society, a group of men, I forget their name, and he'll do anything it takes. Now, he constantly goes to Miss Quigley for girls to like bang, but he does more than just that. He sexually assaults the women that he's with like he's already paying for it but he's like sexually assaulting them he physically abuses them and he ends up murdering a lot of them and miss quigley knows of this and just doesn't care like she has something on him he has something on her and so it's like a working relationship i'm telling you man it's like mob mentality over there and stuff Charlotte Wells. Charlotte is described to be the most gorgeous woman in that entire town. And every man wants her. She is the daughter, the firstborn daughter of Margaret. But Margaret will not let her live in her brothel. She constantly sells her out to men so that she can live and be a wife to them or something like that. Or some type of like, you know, sex wife or something like that. And that causes resentment. And she loves Lucy as her sister, but she has a slight resentment to her only because um, when something happens later on in the season, um, Margaret just stands by as Charlotte gets arrested. And like that really infuriates her, but she loves Lucy to death and she will do anything for Lucy. And so she is um, the sex worker to Sir George. Sir George is obsessed in love with her and will do anything for her. But he's a married man. But he uses his wife's fortune to, like, you know, give Charlotte whatever she wants. Now, a woman back in those days, if she were to, like, inherit money and stuff like that, she had to have a husband in order to, like, you know, get the bank and, like, put the money in the bank and all this other stuff. So... That's why even though his wife has, um, Caroline, I think her name is, has a fortune, he, she has to be married to Sir George. And Sir George, I think he's part of that, that special organization of men that, like, the justice dude wants to be part of. And so, like, he is literally obsessed with Charlotte and will do anything for her. But Charlotte is a very sassy, very independent woman who messes around with other men, especially a man named Daniel. And Daniel's a man she's actually in love with, an Irish man, a good man. This infuriates him and then he starts to have eyes for Lucy and then he wants Lucy and stuff. This pisses off Charlotte and to the point where she bangs his um like manager dude um i think his name is thomas thomas does not like charlotte at all he doesn't like the idea of her being a, um, a streetwalker um he doesn't like the idea that sir george cheats on his wife uh, spends all his wife's money and all this other stuff so he hates charlotte but when charlotte is pissed about the whole lucy thing she bangs thomas and he lets her this causes Thomas to like her, only for her to be all like, look, I just used you for sex. This infuriates him. And when something bad happens, he lies on Charlotte and Daniel and they get arrested. Charles quickly. Charles is a dim-witted, 
son of Mrs. Quigley. He's a mama's boy. Because Miss Quigley is a streetwalker and everything, when she had him, he was supposed to go to the Fowling House. Now, I haven't really talked about that much. I talked about it in Hetty Feather in that Christmas episode. I need to talk about Hetty Feather. That's a great show. Uh, a Fowling House is basically if you have a child and you can't take care of it, or if you have a child out of wedlock, or if you're not married to a man or whatever, um, you're forced to give your child to the family house. It's like a Christian house or a Catholic type house. It's a religious house, let's say that. And like a bunch of nurses work there. And when you're giving to them, you have to abandon the name your parents give you and you have to adopt that of a Christian name. Now, your parents can come back and get you because at first you're put with one family when you're a child and you stay there for a couple of years. Then you go back to the family house until you're like of age, around 16 or so, the legal adult age in Britain. And if your parents come back for you, they have to get um, show the trinket that they gave you to recognize who you are. Um, if they lose that trinket and they don't know which child is with what parent, then the parent can take you back. But if the parent don't come back for you, well, then you have to make a life of your own. You either have to become a maid or you have to, um, if you're a woman and, or and if you're a guy, you either have to be like groundskeeper, a butler, or you have to work in the Navy. And if you can't find a job doing that, then you have to go to a workhouse. And that is like the underworld <laughs> it's like working in the underworld <laughs> let's put it like that uh, boy you know when it comes to those foundling kids who is related to who in the 21st century like nobody like it's weird like think about it you have to give up your name your parents gave you you have to adopt a new name and then if they don't come back for you you don't know who your parents are you just wander the world we don't know who we're related to man seriously so he refused to go by grabbing on his mom's hair and so she took him in and kept him he is a mama's boy and he does whatever his mom wants well, when Emily Lacey comes to work for Margaret Wells, not Margaret Wells, but Miss Quigley, like I said in the first episode, he falls in love with her and he constantly bangs her and he gets jealous when any other man bangs her. Well, when something bad happens to Emily, um, she starts wanting to Charles to like man up to his mom and he starts to do so because like he's in love with her. But then he is poisoned by Emily and he rescues her and he takes her back and leaves his mom and so now him and emily have to make a life for their own and stuff and they do that by working in a bar and you know she just it's a street walker and he hates seeing her with other men now he gets written out of the third season which really pissed me off Emily Lacey. She used to work for Margaret Wells. She is a streetwalker. She's very trashy, but she's very beautiful and lovely. She thinks that she can have a better life living with Miss Quigley. So she auditions, but she almost fails. But, you know, Miss Quigley takes her in anyway. But Miss Quigley cannot stand um, Emily because Emily is very trashy. When they have to audition for men and stand and pose, Emily farts and that pisses off a man where he's like, I do not want to be associated with a woman who f fragilates and farts and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and that pisses off Mrs. Quigley where she starves Emily so that she won't have no more gas on her stomach. <laughs> oh, so Emily is literally locked in a room for most of the season <laughs> and tortured the crap. She hates that she starved. Charles goes there and he gives her food. He bangs her. And even though she starts to kind of fall for Charles a little bit, he is really the only man who treats her good, but she can't appreciate that because she's never been treated good in her life. So she has a very fiery temper. When the justice dude, um, Kong Liffy, or whatever his name is, he has Emily, but she's able to survive him, unlike most girls. And But he beats the snot out of her with their bruises and cuts all over her body. 
and she realizes being with Miss Quigley is not the best and she wants out of there. But Miss Quigley will not let her leave because she's under like contract now and she has not paid off her debt to leave. So they literally lock her in a room. She's constantly screaming and stuff. So one day she tells Charles, you know, stand up to your mom and and um, refuse service from like this one man and blah, blah. So he does that. And so he's upset one day because Miss Quigley constantly smacks Emily around. But then she smacks Charles by mistake. This upsets Miss Quigley because she has smacked her son. When Miss Quigley smacks Emily, she makes her bleed and stuff. Like that's how hard she will smith her in the face. So when Charles come back with alcohol and a little bit of drugs, like liquid drug, um, to make you more higher and stuff or whatever, or make you sleep or something like that. I don't know what it's supposed to do. Um, he tells her only put a little bit in your like alcohol. She uses this opportunity to escape. She pours the whole liquid bottle into the alcohol, makes Charles drink it. When he's passed out, boy, she hightailed it on out of there. And she runs back to Margaret Wells and she begs Margaret to take her back. And Margaret, with a stone cold look on her face, tells her, I'm sorry, Emily, but you left me and betrayed me. And you wanted to live with Miss Quigley. You're a Quigley girl now. So you need to get out of my house. <laughs> Boy, Emily does not take that. She's begging, but she will not let, but, but Margaret will not let her live there. So then she gets all pissed and she spits on like some people in there and she cusses them out and she leaves. Emily is so desperate because now she's just a street walker. She gets drunk and passes out in the street in a fit of rage. There she's found by Nancy, but she disrespects Nancy, but Nancy takes her in anyway and forces her to stay with her. So now Emily knows if Mick Quigley finds her, Miss Quigley will have her killed. And so Nancy is doing her best to keep her hidden until some crap happens with Lucy that causes that of, um, what's her name? Um, Margaret to give up the location of Emily and Miss Quigley finds her, but does not take her back to the brothel. She locks her in a room in a building where the justice dude goes and does his nasty business. Now, Miss Quigley found out at one point that the justice dude murders his girl when she finds blood from a girl that she found on the street to give to that the justice dude. But she doesn't care what happens to Emily. And she tortures her and there and stuff until she is rescued by Charles and then rescued by that of Nancy. But she punches Charles in the face because she's pissed because she thinks also um because after charles passes out he's dying from that poison but then he is um later helped by a physician and so emily's just like pissed They're like ah oh, you're working for your mother and blah blah stuff like that and all the other he's like no i love you and i saved you anyways when they're forced to um now live on like the street they work in like a bar and so she prostitutes herself and he doesn't like that. She's a very interesting character. Mary Cooper is one of Miss Quigley girls and she gets what's known at that time as French pox, which is now known as syphilis. And so she goes to Margaret Wells. Now, of course, Margaret Wells does not like any of Quigley ladies, but she uses that to her benefit. What happens? She keeps Mary only for Mary to suffer and die. If Mary dies um, by being that of a Quigley girl, then she can say, oh, Miss Quigley doesn't take care of her girls. And she ended up getting French pots, which is known as syphilis and blah, blah, blah. This angers that of William is all like you're using this poor girl just to get back at Miss Quigley. And so Charlotte tries to help Mary and everything. But Mary ends up dying. Now, Mary dies the most inconvenient way because Margaret is trying to get some money to keep her house. And she goes to her former lover, Nathaniel. Uh, I think Loxley is what his name is, something like that. Oh, Lennox, Lennox. And so he's going to give Margaret the money and everything until Mary kind of screws that up. 
And so, like, Mary dies. But what does Margaret Wells do? Oh, I could not believe this. So, first, Margaret's all in the streets talking about, look what happened. One of Miss Quigley girls has died from the French pox and everything. You cannot trust um, Lida Quigley because her girls are, like, diseased and everything. And she's telling that to all the townspeople and all the men. And then, so, they have, like, a little funeral for her. A little service, if you will. But Margaret Wells and her ladies take Mary Cooper's body. They place it on the front doorstep of that of um, Lida Quigley, dressed in flowers and that of candles. And when Miss Quigley goes outside to see what the commotion is about, she sees the dead body. She sees the syphilis. And there, standing in a row, are all of Margaret Wells' ladies. As Miss, um, as Margaret is in the front and center, standing there with her hands on her hips. The war, the, the lines of war have been like set in stone, man. <laughs> it's war time. <laughs> it's a gang war of like street walkers. <laughs> Now there's a French lady who's one of Quigley girls who goes to work for Margaret because she can see that, you know, some bad stuff is starting to happen in Quigley's house. She promises to help Emily Lacey, but doesn't. Um, I think her name is Mari um, Lewis or something like that. I don't know. She only lasts for like a season on this show and then she's never seen again. She doesn't even really have a role. Fanny. Fanny is a recurring character of season one, but gets upgraded in the next season. She is a heavier set girl with red hair and she's in love with a dude who works for like the constable, kind of like a police officer. And he always goes for Fanny. Well, Fanny ends up getting pregnant and that's a big no-no in Margaret Wells' house because she knows children are not allowed there, even though Jacob is. And so like... The only person who knows she's pregnant is the French lady who can just tell by looking at her. And Fanny's all like, I'm not pregnant. I'm just big. And she's like, nah, I can tell. Well, Fanny goes to get an abortion. But it turns out Fanny had no idea she was pregnant because of her size. Turns out she's nine months pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> so she goes to that um, law enforcement dude and be all like, guess what? We're going to have a baby. He has decided... I don't want you no more. <laughs> and he leaves her. Oh my God. So she's terrified. She don't know what she's going to do. So she gives birth. And Margaret sees the baby. And I'm like, you know, you got to get up out of my house. Well, when Fanny's feeding her baby and all this other stuff, Margaret has a change of heart and lets Fanny stay. Harriet Lennox. Harriet was brought to this country as a slave, a sex slave to um, that of Nathaniel Lennox, the former lover of Margaret Wells. And so, um, after he bangs Margaret, cause Margaret doesn't let no man touch her but William. And so, like, but she let him in order to get the money and then she has to owe him money back or some crap like that. Anyway. So, Harriet, she, when Margaret goes over there, she sees that Harriet answers the door and assumes like it's his slave. She's all like, no, I am his wife and everything. And so Harriet takes very offense to that of Margaret thinking she wants her old lover back. Well, Nathaniel ends up dying, or Nathan, what is it? Nathaniel, I think it is. He ends up dying. This screws up things for Harriet. And Harriet reveals to Margaret that like, you know, I'm not really his wife, kind of like a common law type thing. Um, cause, you know, I don't think they was allowed to marry them back then. And they have two kids together. She has two kids together by Nathaniel. And Nathaniel has an older son from his ex-wife. His older son, Benjamin, hates Harriet. Why? Because Benjamin's mom was married to Nathaniel. And Harriet came in and stole him, um, stole him from his mother and the mother died. So he hates Harriet and he's all about slavery and stuff. And he tells like, so Harriet, she has her slave papers 
and Nathaniel was supposed to sign up, but he never did because he died. So Margaret tells her, well, you just forged a signature. So as she's about to do that, in comes Benjamin. And so Benjamin's all like, I'll give you your freedom and sign these papers, but you have to get out this house and you can't have your kids. My brother and sister will be my slaves and I'll put them on my plantation. And that's exactly what he does too. Disgusting. And so Harry is upset. She's crying. She's hollering. She wants her kids. So she goes and she lives at Margaret's house just to be as like, you know, um, like kind of like a maid because she tells her I ain't going to be like giving it up to no man. But then she has a change of heart and she becomes a sex worker there. And lots of men want her because she's exotic, because she's black. See, a lot of those white men would never admit they'll be with a black woman, but secretly they were. And so, so she's trying to earn up enough money to buy her kids back because that's what Margaret tells her. That's the only thing you can do. Margaret's not going to give her the money because she already owes debt to the Lennox house and stuff. And so, but Margaret said she will help her get her kids back. So she gives her the idea of buying her kids back as slaves. Well, some stuff happens. Benjamin ends up clickly clacking in with a couple of uh, Margaret Wells ladies, but then something happens when he acts all nasty and rude and will not give those kids back. William steps in and now he is feared. He's like, the price has now went up. And he plans on moving to America and he plans on selling that of his brother and sister. And we even see these little kids, four years old, scrubbing his steps. It is disgusting. And so, like, uh, when Lucy gets in some trouble, <sighs> Harriet blackmails Margaret Wells because she knows what Margaret did for Lucy and stuff. In a bit of rage, Margaret gives her all the money she has to buy her kids, but it's too late. They can't even find Benjamin and stuff. So, William said he will help. He threatens to beat the snot out of that, of. Uh, um, Benjamin. And so Benjamin gives the kids back finally, but he didn't have to, but they didn't have to pay him no money and stuff. Boy, it was crazy back in those times. Nancy, Nancy's sweet. Nancy is tomboy. She's rough. She's tough. And she has some affiliations. If you know what I'm talking about with that of Margaret Wells, they used to work together. Um, um, in the sex business and everything for quickly until they escaped and then they've been living their lives helping each other They're like they're like ride-or-die partners She has her own little brothel where she has two working girls there um, The other girls they actually do the sex stuff, but Nancy she smacks guys in a dominatrix type style and she will do anything to help um, Margaret out she um, takes in Emily Lacey but then Margaret gives her up the location that pisses off Nancy where they are pissed at each other. But she comes back being friends because Lucy needs help. Violet Cross. Violet Cross works for Nancy. She doesn't have much of a storyline. Um, I have no idea if she's a slave or not or if she's free or whatever. They never address that. But she takes up a relationship. She's also a thief. She takes up a relationship with that of Amelia. She is bisexual. And she brings out the lesbian in Amelia. But Amelia is getting scared because her mom is starting to find out and tells her, you know, we can't do this. She's like, oh, we'll just be a little bit more like, you know, secretive and stuff like that. And so that's basically her story. <laughs> Betsy Fletcher. She doesn't have much of a role either. She's only in season one. Um, she works for Nancy. She's in love with like this one dude who works for the Justice Department. He's in love with her. They constantly clickety clack. Um, he doesn't like to be seen inside the brothel house. So what he do, they do it outside and like street corners and, and alleys. And they get found out by the head justice dude who starts to blackmail that guy. Um, when Lucy does something, she, well, that screws everything up. Um, the reason why I'm getting to Lucy last, <laughs> because what she does is pretty much the whole story of the half part of the season. So, um, he tries to help. Um, so Bessie tells her, do, you know, help her and all that. He tries, but he ends up getting fired. Well, when Justice Dude is found out, him and Betsy, they pretty much just go off 
screen and be together and that's the end of her story Florence Scanwell she is a extremely religious woman who is hired by Mrs. Quigley to spy on Margaret Wells so Miss Quigley gave her her house to stay in her and Amelia Florence is going blind and also suffers from like illnesses and some stuff and she's super super religious and she's constantly standing outside Margaret Wells house and preaching the word of God to the point where when Margaret Wells and her um, ladies left to go do something when they came back tons of men would not let them go back into their house <laughs> so Miss Quigley pretty much stole her house by the help of men well, you know, after getting his butt kicked at first, William comes back and whoops their behind and um, they take the house back. When Margaret Wells goes inside the house, she finds Mary Cooper's body dead on the floor. The one that she gave to Miss Quigley and bugs her like on the ground feasting on like um, Mary Cooper. It is disgusting. Mrs. Quigley lets Margaret know, yo, I won this war. <laughs> <laughs> but Florence has a hidden past. Miss Quigley finds that out. It turns out that Mrs. Florence used to be a harlot herself. And after that, she gave that up and went to a life of God. Mrs. Quigley blackmails um, Florence constantly to do her bidding and everything. But she has decided she would do it no more because... Um, Quigley found out about Amelia having a lesbian relationship with a black woman. And so she goes to Margaret Wells for help. And whatchamacallum. Um I forget what happens. And so at first they're like getting along now until Lucy does something, which causes Amelia to have to rat her out. William, he is the lover of Margaret Wells. He loves her to death and will do anything for her, even stand up and argue with her. And when Lucy does what she does, he tells her, you know, you have to like tell somebody you have to get this man help. But Margaret will not do that. And so when the man dies and everything, he has to be the one to get rid of the body. He throws it in the lake along with his son and Nancy. After that, he leaves Margaret. And that is when Harriet finds him in the bar and they're all like, Margaret, and you all say y'all would help me get my uh, kids back, but y'all haven't done it. So he helps and everything. And he stands up to Benjamin. Then he goes back to live with that of like Margaret. But she thinks there might be something between Harriet and that of William. Now, William was born a free man, but his mom was a slave. And But there's nothing going on between him and Harriet. And Harriet does like him until she sees that he will not leave Margaret's side. And they have a son together named Jacob. Now, I can't say his name. Prince? Wazu, I don't know. <laughs> He's a Molly boy and everything. I talked about Molly boys on the Alienist. Go watch that. A Molly boy is a male prostitute who bangs other men. And it could be of any age from that of a child to that of a grown man. He is a very slinky person who um, just hides in the shadows, constantly spying on everything that goes over in Margaret Wells' house. He works with Miss Quigley. She pays him to spy and he always rats her out. He is friends with that of Amelia and helps her sneak away to have her lesbian encounter and everything. And he also helps take care of like her mom because her mom is sick. Uh, and so he really does not have a storyline whatsoever, but they they scrambled for him a storyline and just like shoved it in the show that just came out of nowhere. And after it happened, there's no mention of it ever again. Basically, he has a male lover. His male lover is dying of a disease. He goes to Amelia for help and everything. And but she's not a physician. So she doesn't have much money to give him. So she's all like, don't you have a friend? So he goes to Miss Quigley. And cause he can't have a physician go to that place because they won't go there because of like the location and what the business is. So he tells Miss Quigley that Amelia saw what happened at Margaret Wells' house. 
And so she gives him so much money that he gets his lover um, the medicine he needs. But we don't even know what happens to that lover after that. Like I said, they just scrambled together a storyline and then shoved it in there for him that came out of nowhere towards like the end of the season. Amelia is the daughter of that of Florence. She's religious as well, but she has a secret. She's a lesbian and she's down for the brown. <laughs> she does not want nobody to know. When they get almost found out, she calls it off with her lover. She witnesses what happened at Margaret Wells' house. And then so when Charlotte is arrested and everything, her and Daniel, Margaret talks to the justice dude and he's all like, find me a girl and everything. Since I no longer work for Miss Quigley, find me a girl and blah, blah, blah. And I'll make all this go away. So he wants Amelia cause she is a virgin and he likes virgins and stuff also. And so Margaret is going to do it. She's going to drug Amelia and everything and give her to justice dude. Amelia, right before she about to drink the poison tea, is all like, I must confess to you, Margaret. Um, I have betrayed you. I was forced to tell Miss Quigley what I saw at your house, but I didn't want to do it. But she forced me in there thinking because she's blackmailing me. Margaret has a change of heart and she throws away the poison. And she tells Amelia to leave. But Amelia's all like, you need bait to catch like this crook in there, I think. So she pretends to be sleep knocked out on the bed and Nancy and all of them, they get the, um, the constable and everything. And then the justice dude is caught, um, trying to kidnap that of Amelia. And so as he's taken into a coach to go to jail, the guy who he's been talking to, who's kind of like the, the real main villain of the series, um, that came in late, stabs him in the throat and he dies and everything. That was that high society male organization he was trying to get a part of. I forget that dude's name, but he's really bad and everything. And he knows who Sir George is. So when Sir Ger um, George's body is found and everything in the lake, um, you know, they start trying to find out who is the murderer. Well, it's finally time to start talking about Lucy Wells. Lucy, like I said in the first episode, is the youngest daughter of that of Harriet, um, not Harriet, but Margaret Wells. And so for the longest time, she never did any prostitution until Margaret lost her home. So then she started to get pimped out by her own mother. She is sent to that of Lord um, Ripon, uh, Ripon um, um, house. Now, when she goes to his house, they take her outside of London. She is scared and terrified because she never agreed to leave London. But they're going out to his villa in another like country and stuff. When she tells the men to take her back, they're all like, oh, we can't do that and everything. And if you decide to walk home, well, you're going to get attacked by men out in the woods. But she's all like, well, you take me back. And he's all like, oh, I'll take you back. But you're going to have to do some services to me first. So she does not agree and she goes to live with the Lord and his wife. Well, it turns out they're like a couple type relationship. Um, Lucy did not sign up for this to please both the husband and like the wife. She doesn't want to be there and she is terrified of this man. The man is older and weird. They go hunting out in the woods, but then they give Lucy like a rifle and stuff. And it turns out the Lord, dude, he, he can't even shoot like to save his life. He's constantly missing. Lucy is terrified. They start hunting her in the woods and shooting at her. She's so scared that when she turns around, she shoots and fires. And what does she kill? A deer. <laughs> so they eat the deer that night. And then Lucy, um, the, the, the man's wife's all like, you have to have more of a tongue deer and everything and stand up to men and blah, 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 stuff like that. So Lucy decides she's going to get smart with the dudes all like, haha, you can't even shoot. <laughs> and I can, I'm a girl. This pisses him off when everybody starts laughing at him and he slaps his wife to the floor. This terrifies Lucy. So it's at the point where she's finally able to get back home and she lives with her mom. Her mom is still pimping her out and she does not like that and stuff. 
And it gets to the point where she's starting to have a little bit of PTSD. She doesn't really want to be with men. But before she went to go live with that Lord, man, she wanted to give herself up to somebody she actually liked. So she finds a stable boy who she thinks is cute. And she be like, hey, come clickety clap me. He's all like, the money I have is for food and I'll starve. She's like, I don't care. Clickety clap me. So they clickety clap. So before she gave it up in prostitution, she gave it up to somebody at least she likes a little bit. And we never see that guy again. So anyway, now that she's constantly getting pimped out by her mom and everything, um, Sir George takes an interest in her. And it's getting to the point where Lucy just no longer really wants to do this lifestyle. And she's having a lot of PTSD and stuff from what happened when she was with that other guy. And so Sir George, after he assaulted that of uh, Charlotte and everything, when Charlotte tried to leave him, he later tries to buy that of Lucy. Margaret agrees, but Margaret does not know that Sir um, George assaulted that of... Uh, Charlotte because Charlotte just didn't say so he tries to tell he tells like Lucy you know you're mine now and we're gonna do it now and you're gonna say I'm the best thing ever and you're gonna be better than your sister and Lucy does not want to do it she's like I am not sold to you and everything he's like oh yes you are and everything and so he tries to assault Lucy Lucy grabs a knife and stabs him in the stomach he bleeds like crazy. Margaret finds out. William don't find out. Here, a couple other people. Margaret has decided she's gonna let this man die. Cause if they get a doctor to stitch him up, Lucy will be hung. See, Lucy is a girl. She has killed a white man. That is a huge criminal offense. Killing is a criminal offense, but when you kill a white man, oh, it's worse. And you will be hung no matter what. And so, like, Margaret knows this, but William's all like, she is a child, and they will have leniency on her, they will have mercy on her, and Margaret's all like, no, no, they won't. So the man is constantly like, where is my doctor? Why am I not stitched up? You're gonna let me here to die? And then Margaret comforts him. She sits on him at first on the wound, then she gets on top of him, and she chokes the life out of him. She kills Sir George. William finds this out and William's all like, you have just made this a million times worse and everything. Both of you and Lucy's like, no, because I'm going to take the fall for this um, if need be. But what you're going to do is you're going to get rid of the body. So that's what William does. He gets rid of Sir George and everything. Amelia sees this and like, you know, um, I, th I think also maybe even um, the prince dude. He's not really a prince. That's the way he calls stuff. And so this is what causes William to leave Margaret at first. Margaret is upset. She ends up telling Charlotte. Charlotte tries to comfort that of her sister. But there is a problem. See, Margaret had no idea that Charlotte and Sir George had a huge public fight. Um, a verbal argument fight out in public and everything. And so, like, now people are going to suspect that Charlotte is the killer and that um, Daniel is her lover and they plotted this. Well, that's exactly what they think when Miss Quigley finds out and then she rats them all out and everything. So, here comes the justice people and everything. They're there to arrest Charlotte. Margaret lets Charlotte just be taken out in shackles and everything. This pisses off Charlotte to death. She's all like, how are you gonna like protect Lucy over me and blah, 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 and stuff like that. And so her and Daniel are in like, you know, the prison and they're gonna rot there and they're gonna be hung. Well, Margaret is able to at least get um, Charlotte out if she does what she's gonna do to Amelia. This gets Charlotte out, but Daniel now has to take the fall for it. Charlotte is upset and so like Daniel's an innocent man. You're like, you, you know, this isn't fair and everything. He told Charlotte, do not go back to your mom's house because of what Lucy did. And she went anyway, dooming them both. So Lucy is upset and she wants to tell like the constable and all of them. Like, you know, she's the one who did it. So nobody else has to fry for this. Well, 
Margaret has decided she's going to confess to the murder and everything and, you know, take the fall for Lucy. Lucy does not want it, but Margaret's all like, you know, a mother protects her child and everything. Well, after a whole bunch of betrayals left and right, um, and as, you know, and all this other crap, um, like I said before, the justice dude gets, like, arrested and everything. And then, so... After the one dude lied on Charlotte, that's how she got arrested and stuff. Um, somebody went to her, I forget who, went to Sir George's wife and told her, you know, like Charlotte's innocent, blah, blah, blah. blah. And I think Charlotte even, no, Charlotte uh, went to the wife. And the wife is all like, what are you doing here and everything? You killed my husband. She's like, I did not kill your husband. And like, you know, Thomas lied on me because I banged him and then I can't be his. So he lied on me. And then so when the wife finds out this is true, she fires Thomas and she has Daniel released from like prison. And then both her and Charlotte, um, both his name and Charlotte name is like clear. But then the craziest thing happens. Margaret Wells um, sees Miss Quigley talking to Charlotte. She also, um, Char um, Miss Quigley also helped, I can't talk. Ah, it is Miss Quigley that helped get Charlotte at a prison and stuff like that earlier, um, not um, Margaret. And so like, Miss Quigley wants Charlotte to work for her. That'll be the biggest nail in the coffin to that of Margaret Wells and their little war and everything. And it works. Margaret is furious. Margaret goes to Quigley's house. She's like, I want my daughter back in. She's all like, no, I will not come back because you um, never gave me a home. You just kept like pimping me out to men so I wouldn't have to live there. And Miss Quigley's the one who got me out of jail while you let me be dragged off. So then in a twist of events, Charlotte tells Daniel, I no longer want to. As long as you be with me, you will never have like a good woman. And you know, you'll probably always be in danger and stuff. And he's all like, how can you betray your mom and work for Miss Quigley? The twist of all twists came. Charlotte's all like, oh, I'm gonna work for Miss Quigley. But what she doesn't know is I'm gonna bring her down from the inside. See, Charlotte hates that she is a harlot. She hates that Lucy is a harlot. And who made them into that? Margaret Wells, their mother. But why did Margaret do that? Because Margaret was sold at like 10 or nine years old to Mrs. Quigley. Mrs. Quigley is the reason for all of their family pain and everything. So she said she's gonna bring down a woman who ruined her entire family's life. And so she's going to work in Miss Quigley's house as kind of like a mole trying to like find out every bad thing she can to bring her down. Something her mother has always wanted to do. Holy crap. I did not see this coming. I assumed she was just going to betray her mom. But no, she's not even doing that. She's working to bring down the woman who screwed her entire family up. That is insane. This is such mob mentality, boy. I swear to God. Like, it's, it's like a mob of prostitutes. <laughs> Happy Women's History Month, everybody. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.